Thank you for taking part in the Grow Healthy Team Nutrition Initiative webinar series for early care and education providers. And welcome to this webinar, Win with Tastings in Early Care Centers. My name is Corey Wu Jung, and I am the Northern Region Grow Healthy Program Coordinator for the Family and Community Health Sciences Department of Rutgers Cooperative Extension in New Jersey. I will be the host of your webinar today. Grow Healthy Team Nutrition is a project made possible by a USDA grant provided to the New Jersey Department of Agriculture and facilitated by the Department of Family and Community Health Sciences of Rutgers Cooperative Extension. The goals of the project are to enhance the center's wellness environment and policies, use the garden and tastings to promote healthy eating, enhance nutrition learning experiences, and improve the quality of food served in the center and to implement strategies to engage families in wellness activities and positive role modeling. Eight centers throughout the state received $1,500 in mini-grant funds to support the Grow Healthy goals and activities. To support early care and education centers in their efforts to improve their wellness environment, Family and Community Health Sciences offers this webinar as part of a series of five webinars. In addition to this one, Topics include wellness policies, choosing healthy recipes, role modeling healthy behaviors, and parent engagement. After completing today's webinar, participants will be able to plan and conduct successful food tastings, list three benefits of tastings, manage food allergies and food safety, and use food grown in the garden. Why tastings, you may ask? Well, food tastings can encourage children to try and eat new foods. We especially encourage tasting vegetables and fruits since children do not eat enough of these foods. Tastings increase interest in choices and may improve eating habits. Feedback from classmates and teachers can encourage reluctant eaters to try new foods. Tasting can help you determine foods to add to the menu that children will eat. You can taste a new recipe or try an existing one, including finding lower fat and sugar alternatives that children will accept. Tastings can complement nutrition education and storytelling. It also extends the science lessons about food. Use your center's garden when you're considering food tastings. The good news is that New Jersey law allows food grown in school gardens to be eaten as long as the soil has been previously tested. The garden can provide children with hands-on learning about growing food. Children can plant, weed, water, tend, and harvest with some guidance. Rutgers Master Gardeners, local garden clubs, and interested parents, grandparents, and guardians are good sources of volunteers to help in the garden have plenty of child-sized garden tools available. Gardening is a great way to get kids moving and physically active, and it certainly makes things a lot of fun. The garden can be used to expand lessons in nutrition, science, math, writing, and literature. Children learn, can learn about the food cycle, from seed to plant to edible crops to composting. Children can learn the effects of soil, weather, water, insects, the beneficial kind, as well as the pests, and much, much more. Children are more likely to taste foods they helped grow, so nothing is better than tasting something you've had a hand in growing. Link tastings to your curriculum. Try a food that's part of a nutrition lesson, a story being read during circle time, or you can try foods that are specific to a particular culture, geographical area, or season being studied. Taste foods grown in the garden. Host a salad party, berry day, or harvest day. Make stone soup with all the veggies from the garden. Buy locally grown vegetables to supplement what you grow so all children have an opportunity to taste. Involve your food service provider Tastings are a great way to explore students' acceptance of new foods or recipes 
that you would like to serve. A tasting can help answer some children's questions about food, such as what is a bee? Do green and yellow beans taste the same? Use their questions to help you select foods to try. Tie a, ta a tasting to a special event, such as back to school night, family fun night, or at the end of the day, so families can get involved. Try linking tastings to national or local celebrations, such as Heart Health Month in February, National Nutrition Month in March, Read Across America Day in March, Month of the Young Child in April, and Farm to School Month or Farm to Preschool Week in October. Link tastings to different stories. Here's a short list of many great books about food, healthy eating, and agriculture. Invite a local celebrity, such as the program director, a parent, older sibling, the mayor, or a police or firefighter to read the book during lunchtime. If you're still not sure what foods to use for a taste test, focus on the 2010 U.S. Dietary Guidelines and choose My Plate key messages to help guide your choices. Make half your plate vegetables and fruits, make at least half your grains whole, and switch to fat-free or 1% milk. For additional ideas, check out USDA's Team Nutrition website, where you can find the cookbook, Recipes for Healthy Kids, which has a version for child care centers and family daycare providers. The publication is free to download, or bound hard copies may be ordered. Recipes feature foods both children and adults should eat more of, like dark green and orange vegetables, dried beans and peas, and whole grains. The Let's Move Child Care website, found at HealthyKidsHealthyFuture.org, is another great resource. If you participate in USDA's Child and Adult Care Food Program, try new recipes using USDA commodity foods. As we mentioned before, food grown in the garden is a great source for inspiration to help you guide your selection of foods to taste. If you don't grow enough for everyone to taste, then buy more to supplement. Ask children, staff, and families to suggest a food. Maybe a family favorite will appeal to someone else. Food safety is always important when handling food, especially from your garden. Always be sure to test the soil prior to planting. Soil testing is available for a fee from the New Jersey Agricultural Experiment Station Plant and Soil Testing Lab. Contact your local Rutgers Cooperative Extension Office for more information. Follow your program's food safety protocol. Wash hands before handling food and eating. Be sure to wet and lather your hands for 20 seconds. You can time this easily by singing happy birthday twice, then rinse and dry hands properly. Practice with children with and without water. Be sure tabletops and other surfaces are clean. Wash produce under lots of running water. Remove soil, insects, and other plant parts like pieces of leaves on green beans. Rinse greens well since soil may hide in crevices. Use a brush on rough or hard surfaces such as melons, squash, potatoes, and cucumbers. Sort and remove any damaged areas. However, small blemishes are normal and generally safe. Food allergies can affect people of all ages and are very serious. Before selecting a food for tasting, consult your school health professional teachers, and parents to determine food allergies and sensitivities. Follow each child's food allergy plan. Avoid foods to which children have allergies or food sensitivities. 90% of food allergies are from these eight foods. Peanuts, eggs, tree nuts, milk, fish, shellfish, 
soy, and wheat. The other 10% come from over 160 other foods. In order to minimize exposure to allergens, inform families ahead of time of tastings. Follow your program's wellness policy. Invite a parent or guardian of a food allergic child to join the taste testing to ease any concerns or worries. Be sure hands and surfaces are allergen free and use your wellness policy to guide the selection of the taste testing location, whether it be the lunchroom, the classroom, or another place. Address challenges with a team approach to planning and implementation to overcome any potential challenges. Let's look at some specific concerns. Think about when would be the best time of day for a tasting. Will it be during snack or meal time, or as part of a curriculum activity, such as when children are learning about the five senses? If food preparation time is tight, use pre-prepped foods such as baby carrots, pre-cut apples, and pre-washed greens. Involve volunteers such as parents, a local chef, students from a culinary arts program, and involve the children whenever possible. They can help out with washing vegetables, cutting with a plastic knife, or sorting. To keep costs under control, use foods you already have on hand. Ask vendors for samples, or maybe a local farmer can bring in some samples. Use foods you need to promote or include to meet new meal patterns and seek grant opportunities when possible. To gain program support, involve people from the beginning. Ask for staff volunteers. Many may be passionate about eating healthy and engage your school wellness council. If there's concern about too much work for staff, keep it simple. Ask for volunteers and have children help when possible. Engage everyone in wellness, but don't force anyone. Find out who wants to take the lead and divide the work and have fun. Here's some more tasting tips. Think about the recipe, presentation, and how you'll serve it. Cornell University's Smarter Lunchroom research shows that giving food a fun name increases children's willingness to eat it. Use names like Bugs Bunny Beans, Elmo's Eggplant, Zippy Sweet Potatoes, X-Ray Vision Carrots, or have kids come up with their own names and vote on the winner. We all know that we eat with our eyes, so be sure the food looks good. Use fun serving plates, garnish the food, and try colorful napkins. Also think about where you will do the tasting. Will it be at a special table in a common area? Or will you use a mobile cart brought to each classroom? Generate excitement. Ask staff and family to join in on the fun. Talk up the tasting in advance. Have a countdown a few days ahead. Encourage, but do not force children to try new foods. I like the try one bite rule. Or try a little game where children and adults try the food at the same time. You can say, one, two, three, we each take a bite together. However, if a child says no, then say, okay, maybe you'd like to try it another time. Children may change their minds after seeing their friends or teacher eat it. Inform parents about the tasting and provide the recipe and encourage parents and children to try it at home. Involve children in food preparation and serving. Kids who prepare food are more likely to eat it. Let them wash tomatoes, cut peppers, take the ends off of green beans, shell peas. Grow Healthy's website offers a handout on age appropriate cooking activities for kids. Expand the experience. Talk about the food. How does it grow? Where do we get it? Have children describe the food's texture, flavor, color. Ask if they will eat the food at home or have they tried it before? How is it prepared? 
invite a farmer to talk about growing the food. Perhaps he can bring in produce for display and or tasting, or use a book or video. Ask the local Cooperative Extension office for additional suggestions. Ask student for feedback. Put popular foods on the menu. Ask what they didn't like about the food to determine future tastings. Is it too bitter, sweet, spicy? How would you rather try it, raw or cooked, cold or hot? Offer food in different ways in other tastings. Raw, cooked, plain or seasoned. It may take 20 tastings for someone to like a food. Be sure to share the results on a bulletin board, school website, or in communication with families, such as an email or newsletter. Remember, we can all win with tastings. They are a great way to encourage healthy eating, expand food preferences, enrich the curriculum, and engage staff, children, and families in school wellness. It's a great way to improve the health of our children. Thank you for viewing this webinar. We ask that you now complete a brief 12 question evaluation by clicking on the link on your screen. Upon completion of the survey, you will be able to download a certificate of participation. The slides and resources used in this webinar are available on the Grow Healthy website shown on your screen. This webinar is one of several we have made available to you on the Grow Healthy website. Please view the additional training webinars at your convenience. And thank you again for your participation.